<sighs> Welcome back guys, I really hope you had a lovely Christmas and I wish you all the best for the new year. Maybe you've made some Night Sky related New Year's resolutions, but either way, January brings us a pretty excited start to the year. Okay guys, so today I've got to announce the winners of the December giveaway. We're giving away a calendar, a print and a canvas. Uh, so I'll be announcing those at the end of the video. And before we jump into today's video, I'm going to share with you three time lapses that absolutely blew my mind in 2018. The first one is this 10 year time lapse of the Crab Nebula taken by Detlev Hartman, like seriously insanely dedicated piece of work all the images taken with the exact same equipment over the course of a decade and you could just see the expansion of the crab nebula over 10 years <sighs> insane <laughs> next up is this two-part time lapse put together by kevin gill using footage and images from the Cassini spacecraft which did a flyby of Jupiter and Saturn and in the first one you can see Io and Europa and Jupiter's great red spot and then you have Titan as it passes over Saturn and you can see the edge on rings really awesome to see these put into a time lapse and made into a video again it just it doesn't even look real it's just absolutely insane Lastly is this time lapse of a rocket launch. It's the Russian Progress MS-10 rocket, which launched uh, from Kazakhstan in November 2018. And this time lapse was captured by ESA astronaut Alexander Gerst from the International Space Station. And I'm just gonna play it in full. It's just over a minute long, but this is mind blowing. Seriously, enjoy this. <laughs> absolutely insane stuff but let's get into January 2019 as I mentioned there is a really exciting start to the month on the night of January the 3rd go into the morning of January the 4th we have the quadrantids meteor shower and given that it's not going to be interfered with by moonlight it's going to be the best meteor shower of 2019. The Geminids and the Perseids both have very full moons this year, so the Quadrantids is set to be the best meteor shower of the year. It's a very northern hemisphere um, favoured meteor shower. And there's one big problem with the Quadrantids in that the peak of the meteor shower doesn't last very long. Most meteor showers peak for a few days, um, giving everyone all over the world a chance to see it, but the Quadrantids peaks for merely a few hours where there'll be rates of 50 to 100 meteors uh, per hour. This year experts seem to think that the peak will be on the 4th of January at about 2 a.m. UTC time uh, so it heavily favours European watchers but of course these predictions are um, quite a lot of guesswork so they're never really that accurate but it's just worth just getting out on the night of the third the morning of the fourth if you have clear skies get out there and see if you can get some meteors because it might be your best chance this year if you're in the northwest pacific like japan and some parts of china then you will get a partial solar eclipse on january the 6th where the moon will sort of partially cover the face of the sun and given my youtube analytics there's not many people viewing from that area but i'll put a link in the description uh, for more information on that however for those of us in europe 
as well as South America, North America, North and West Africa. Um, on the night of the 20th and the morning of the 21st, there will be a total lunar eclipse. Now, a lunar eclipse is where the full moon passes into the shadow of Earth. And as it does so, it begins to dim and fade until it turns a really gorgeous crimson red. And you are able to see a lot more stars and sort of uh, objects in the night sky you would only see during a new moon period. The reason the moon goes red is because the light of the sun is refracted by Earth's atmosphere. For those of us in the UK, the eclipse starts at about 3.30 a.m. and totality starts at around 4.40 a.m. and totality lasts for about an hour as well. So a nice hour of, of really dark skies. Some people like to do telephoto series showing the moon as it dims and fades and then turns red. Uh, some people like to do almost a star trail with a wide angle lens showing uh, the moon going red and uh, the stars coming out and that kind of thing but uh, it's a good opportunity to get creative and it's really interesting to go from the brightness of a full moon to almost the, the same brightness as new moon where it's dark enough to see really faint objects so get your thinking caps on now maybe you can get a bit creative with it and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with now let's take a look at the planets so as the sun sets in January, you'll see Mars appear in the southern skies. It's shining at a magnitude of 0.7, and it is the only evening planet this month, and that will go on to set at around 11.30 local time in the evening. But the, the morning skies are a little bit more active, so if I just look towards the east and fast forward time a little bit, you'll see uh, Venus rise in there and on January the 6th Venus will reach uh, greatest western elongation so it will be at its highest uh, visible point in the sky and as you can see there um, about an hour after Venus Jupiter will rise so the morning sky a bit more exciting for planets and if you're lucky you might catch Mercury as well um, it's really close to the sun making it quite difficult to, to see and capture but depending on your latitude you might have a better chance uh, of capturing Mercury. Now Venus and Jupiter will get closer to each other as the month goes on and right at the end of the month there's a really nice conjunction between a crescent moon, Venus and Jupiter. Two good opportunities, the 30th and the 31st. Uh, personally I think the 31st is better. But there's also a similar photo opportunity at the start of the month with Venus, Jupiter and the Crescent Moon. But of course the planets won't be as close together compared to the end of the month. Um, so you can see a few different dates there where there's a nice opportunity to get the Crescent Moon, Venus and Jupiter in the same shot. So, lots of exciting conjunctions there and opportunities for some some nice photographs. Uh, there's also still Comet 46P Weiratan in the sky. Wasn't the most exciting of comets, it didn't really develop a tail. And it's going to be dimmer this month than it was in December. And for those of us here in the UK, it's also going to be a lot higher in the night sky, almost at the zenith. Uh, so not very favourable for landscape astrophotography, but if you want to do some tracking maybe, uh, I'll post a link in the description below uh, for more details on its whereabouts in the night sky on, on various nights. And that is pretty much it for this month guys, pretty exciting start to the year, we've got a partial solar eclipse, a total lunar eclipse, a meteor shower, a comet, uh, and lots of nice planet and moon conjunctions as well, so lots of exciting stuff to go for, who needs the Milky Way? And now it is time to announce the winners of the giveaway and I'm just going to jump straight into it guys. In third place was this image of a moon and a building in London taken by Phil Verney. And there's just a really good balanced exposure between the moon and the building here as well as a, a decent depth of field to get both of those subjects in focus. And I picked one of Phil's images because I mean... 
uh, seeing his images a lot this year, even though uh, I think he lives in London or maybe works in London, uh, maybe both, but um, he's really been uh, pushing astrophotography even though he is in the centre of London, so you know, planets and, and the moon and even the Orion constellation, so it's just really inspiring to see someone living in such a light polluted area still pushing and still uh, creating some wonderful astrophotography, so well done Phil, a third place. Next up is this image from Martin of an erupting fuego volcano in Guatemala. And you've got the bright star Menka shining on the right as well as the Pleiades open star cluster on the left. And I love how the, the long exposure has kind of blurred that plume of smoke a little bit and it, it really makes the image look so 3D. I mean I've been looking at this image for ages and it just has this amazing 3D perspective to it. Um, so I really love this image, well done Martin. And finally in first place is this image from Ainsley Bennett, a conjunction between a crescent moon and Venus taken from I believe the Isle of Wight or definitely the south coast of, uh, of the UK and it's just the, the balance of the tonality in this image is really really well controlled and the, the reflection of Venus and the moon just beautifully composed that gap between uh, that stack and the cliffs there and I love the really cool colour palette as well it's just a absolutely stunning image so well done Ainsley I will be in touch with uh, all three of you to arrange the, the prizes and the giveaways and I will of course be sharing all of those image, yeah, images on my Instagram account as well so all of you guys can uh, take a look at the rest of their work and uh, give them a follow as well. This month I want you guys to use the hashtag Wittens on, I mean we've got some pretty exciting stuff, we've got the, the partial solar eclipse, the total lunar eclipse and the meteor shower and Comet 46P so any of those things I'll be looking for those um, because those images are sort of special for January so make sure to keep using the Wittens hashtag. Uh, it's nearly been a year and we've nearly made 3,000 posts which is insane. Uh, there's some really 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 good content in that hashtag and I'm excited to see how it grows in, in 2019 So thank you guys so much for participating. Thank you so much for enjoying these videos Make sure to like this video if you've enjoyed it Feel free to share it anywhere you like Facebook groups or Reddit uh, anything that can help me and my channel out would be hugely hugely appreciated And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies